into the room, I perform hand hygiene. Um, so when walking to the patient's room, we're going to assess for the patient's safety. Uh, do they look like they're in distress? Are they agitated, confused? We'll want to check their level of consciousness. Uh, we're going to want to perform a hazard check of the room. So if there's anything they can trip over, is there water on the ground? Uh, make sure the environment is safe, um, as well as that the bedside is safe. So we're looking, uh, are the rails, rails in the correct position? Is the bed at the height it should be, which is lowered? Um, how their tubing is, uh, oxygen levels. We're gonna wanna make sure you have the correct patient as well. You wanna make sure their name band matches up. Um, and again, just making sure the patient doesn't look like they're in any visible distress. Um, so we'll start with uh, the patient's temperature. So before taking any vital signs, we want to ask the patient is, if it's okay to take their vital signs. So we ask for permission, and in this case, it is okay. We're going to make, want to make sure they're um, sitting comfortably. So right now, we have her seated, her posture is up, her feet are on the ground. Um, so with taking temperature, we're going to take an oral temperature today. Uh, we're going to ask the patient if she's had anything to uh, eat, drink, or smoke recently. Um, she hasn't, but if she has, we save the temperature to the end of the assessment. Um, so we'll start by removing the fro, um, sticking on a new sheath, make sure that's on tightly. Um, so we'll want to make sure it's set to oral as well as we're going to do it in degrees Celsius. Uh, so we ask their patient to open their mouth and we'll insert that under their tongue. Then we'll ask the patient to close their mouth and then they can hold it or you can hold it. And then we're going to wait until we hear a beep. Perfect, so it's at 37 degrees Celsius. We're gonna eject the sheath. Uh, noting on our chart that the temperature was 37 degrees Celsius and the route we took that, so that would be oral. Perfect. Uh, so next we'll um, check for pulse rate. So um, doing this, we'll be taking the um, the, uh, the radial pulse, so that would be in the thumb line. Um, so we'll palpate with two fingers to feel. Um, and then before actually taking the measurement, we're going to know if it's regular or irregular. Um, if it happens to be irregular, um, we're going to palpate the number of beats for the whole 60 seconds, or we'll take the, or auscultate with the apical heart rate. Uh, if it is regular, we'll only take it for 30 seconds, and um, yeah, we'll only take it for 30 seconds, and we'll multiply it by two. Uh, as well, um, after I'm doing that, if it is just the 30 seconds or if it's the 60 seconds, we're going to measure our respiratory rate. So that'll just consider for be me watching the person breathing up and down uh, to count that, just so they don't they know they're not being watched and their their breathing's not affected. Um, so that can be done directly after the, yeah, you do the pulse. Yeah. Okay, so I'll begin by palpating. Okay, so her uh, pulse rate was 98 uh, beats per minute. Um, so we take note of that, but um, before writing that down, we'd again check for the respiratory rate. So had I not said anything, uh, I would be still palpating, but watching her chest rise and fall. So over, um, it looks regular, so we're going to do a 30 second time period. Okay, 
so uh, we'll take note that the pulse rate was 98 beats per minute and it's taken from we'd note that it was her right arm um, and it was regular and then for the respiratory rate um, we'd note that it was 20 breaths per minute um, and that it also uh, appeared regular um, so for this uh, vital sign assessment, we'll be taking the blood pressure. Uh, so prior to this, we asked if the patient was okay with her getting her vitals taken. She gave permission. Uh, make sure she's in a comfortable position. Um, so with our blood pressure, um, if we didn't know the baseline, we would palpate uh, to avoid oscillatory gap. The oscillatory gap. In this case, we do know her baseline, so her systolic is uh, around 102. Um, so we'll be uh, when we inflate our. Uh, cuff will be going about 20 to 30 above that. Um, so we'll ask that she puts her um, arm uh, at the level of her heart, not above, so we can use the pillow to support that. So we'll palpate to find her brachial pulse around the brachial artery. Okay, so once we know where it is, uh, we're going to put our cuff on. We want to make sure our cuff is um, about the width of the cuff is about 40% of the diameter of her arm. Um, and when we put the cuff on, we're going to want to make sure these arrows match with the brachial artery. Uh, we want to make sure the cuff is on smoothly and it's not too tight, not too loose, uh, that there's no gaps. So we'll have to take a hyperextend your arm just so you can feel a little bit better. So it's going to be, we're going to put it about two centimeters above where we felt that. Nice and perfect. Um, so to take the blood pressure, we're going to auscultate at the brachial artery. Um, we're going to put our stethoscope where we felt that pulse. In that case, it was right around here. Um, so we'll put the stethoscope over the brachial artery. Perfect. Uh, so we're going to keep the bulb in a locked position. And when we inflate, we'll go about 20 to 30 above the 102. Uh, and when we slowly deflate, we'll go at uh, 22 millimeters mercury per second. Uh, taking note of when a beat, you see your beat, that'll be the systolic, and then when the uh, sound goes away, that'll be your diastolic. So we'll take a mental note of that. Um, we're putting the blood pressure as uh, 102 over 78. Uh, and we're also going to take note of when we write it down the arm that, that was, it was taken on. So it was taken on the right arm and she's in a sitting position. Cool.